It looks like Dolby is taking matters into their own hands. Remember how I said earlier that after 10 years of HDR hype, generated mostly by Dolby, HDR blockbuster movies are dimmer than ever, not getting brighter, actually getting dimmer. Well, Dolby Vision 2, promising an AI feature that adapts scene to scene to your TV's capabilities. Capabilities. So if my TV is capable of 5,000 nits, maybe Dolby Vision 2 can elevate those peak specular highlights to 5,000 nits. Today, we're going to talk about the promises and hopes of Dolby Vision 2 in this era of dim HDR. More importantly, there are a few catches and caveats to think about before you hold off on buying a TV with Dolby Vision 2. Hey friends, want to upgrade to Windows 11 Pro but can't afford the official price of $199? How about $21 or Windows 10 for $16 with my discount code SF20? Thanks to our sponsor, Hookies. Yes, Black Friday is here. Get an additional 30% off with my code SF20. Go to hookies.com, add Windows 11 Pro to your cart, apply my discount code SF20, and bam, only $21. Here's how we activate it. Go to your WhoKeys account at the top right under User Center. Click on My Purchased Orders. Click on View Keys and Code. Click Get the Key. Copy the Windows 11 Pro key under Code Card. Then go to your System Settings, scroll down and click Activation. Click Change Product Key. Paste the key code. Click Next and you're done. So don't miss out on these amazing deals. Click on my links in the video description below. In my last video, we concluded that the most recent HDR blockbusters of the summer were essentially enhanced SDR movies. Specifically, 10 years after the announcement of HDR and Dolby Vision, its 10,000 nit capability, movies are really not buying into the bright spectral highlights that now your TVs are capable of. So the TV makers have jumped in on this bandwagon of HDR hype, right? And then Dolby announced, yes, with Dolby Vision, you might hit 10,000 nits of spectral highlights that will make your movie immersion magical. But what happened 10 years later is movies did not get brighter specular highlights, it got dimmer. So today we examine how Dolby Vision 2 may be treading a fine line between honoring creators intent for dimmer HDR movies against the consumer's wish for HDR impact because you did pay an extra thousand for the additional 2000 nits of HDR highlights that you're not getting. We're going to start with what is Dolby Vision 2. It's a new format but dive a bit deeper into this new format. Now remember it was just announced maybe a week ago, so we don't have all the details beyond the marketing hype, but parsing through the words, the implications, the suggestions, this is what I see. Dolby Vision 2 isn't just a firmware update or a software algorithm update. It is an entire refresh of the Dolby Vision format requiring an all new chipset on the side of the TV makers. Yes, they have to buy and install an all new processor. Essentially, you'll have to buy a new TV, right? You can't add Dolby Vision 2 to older TVs and the content creators, movies, platforms like Netflix, Apple TV, Prime Video, they all have to upgrade their format as well on the algorithm side, on the software side. Now it is backwards compatible, meaning your older TVs can see Dolby Vision even if it's in Dolby Vision 2. It won't benefit from the upgrades, but it won't be unable to see it. More importantly, Dolby Vision 2 TVs can also watch backwards compatible older Dolby Vision. The question is, what does Dolby Vision 2 promise if both your TV and the content support Dolby Vision 2. Now for me, the key feature here is bi-directional tone mapping. Before, I think it was just unidirectional, meaning all the information that's in the movie, the original Dolby Vision, your TV sees it and tries to match its hardware to the spec, but with bi-directional, the TV now is sharing its capabilities, its brightness capabilities with the Dolby Vision system on this new chip, and with AI assistance, it's going to push the brightness of the content to match your TV. Maybe a little bit brighter than the creator intended. Now, obviously this is gonna be automatic. 
I wish there was a slider that you could push it harder. There's no promise that it's user upgradable or user managed to toggle this low, medium, high if you want really bright specular highlights. It's supposed to be automatic and I know why they're doing that, right? Again, if they want Hollywood support, they can't let the users willy nilly make everything brighter, which I think we should be able to. Come on, it's our TV. Give us a bit of viewer intent. I understand creator's intent and that's why we turn it off, right? You get creator's intent, you wanna watch SDR enhanced, fine. But it's your TV, you wanna see Jurassic World Rebirth pop a little bit more? You know, take that 350 nit specular highlights to 3000 nits. Well, if there was a slider on Dolby Vision 2 that allows me to max that out, give it to me, give me that option. But apparently it appears to be automatic now, but, and here's the big but, maybe not. And this is why I say maybe not. If you notice the most recent Dolby Vision implementations on some TV models, gives you the ability to play with the settings just a little bit, allowing you to get a bit brighter than what the creator intended. You got Dolby Vision Dark, which is supposed to be the creator's intent, but then you have Dolby Vision IQ, Dolby Vision Bright, Dolby Vision Custom, you know, that's all there. And I think, I believe, I firmly hope, Dolby Vision 2 at some point, because now it has all the information, your TV's capability against what is in that Dolby Vision 2 metadata of the source, specifically, there are certain areas of that scene that you can control and get a bit brighter than normal. And it could be anywhere, right? It could be in the darker areas. You want to maybe limit the adjustment to shadow detail, just raise the shadow without raising anything else. Or for me, HDR impact, just raise the brightest specular highlights, two or 3000 nits. We're not talking the whole TV goes to 3000 nits, God forbid. We're talking that little sparkle in the sky, that little explosion, that boom, right? That's what I'm talking about. And now that bi-directional tone mapping is called AI-driven content intelligence. That's the secret, I think, to Dolby Vision 2, to making HDR a little bit more impactful. But again, Dolby has to be very careful here. I'm not gonna go out and tell Dolby to do this, do that, because if they want the industry support, oh, I know the TV makers eventually will support this because they gotta give you a reason to buy a new TV, right? It is the content industry, Hollywood, Netflix, all those guys, they're gonna have to revamp their entire software stack money for Dolby and cost to them. But when they do that and it all starts to connect, suddenly with this AI driven content intelligence, I think home users will have a bit more control over how impactful their HDR could be. And so far, the only TV maker that has announced using this chip is Hisense. It doesn't mean no one else is using it yet. It's just Hisense is the only one saying, hey, we got this chip ready to go. Obviously, I believe TCL will be using it and likely Sony will be using it. They just haven't announced it because two things have to happen. First, you have to have the right chip. But second, the TV maker has to pay Dolby Vision to license Dolby Vision 2. Now, they're already paying Dolby Vision to license Dolby Vision 1, but I think this is a cash grab on Dolby's side as well. Sony and TCL has to decide, Ugh, are we gonna keep up with Hisense and pay the extra fee? I think they will, e eventually, eventually, and this is why, chicken and the egg. Unless Netflix and Hollywood Studios, the disc releases and other streaming platforms support Dolby Vision 2, the TV makers are like, wait, wait, why are we rushing into this new format if there's no content? Look, you don't need Dolby Vision 2 if the movies were already bright to begin with, right? You can use that with Dolby Vision. Remember the original Dolby Vision, 10,000 nits capability? Well, at any time, any of these Hollywood creators, uh, Netflix movie streaming platform, they could have their colorist implement a 10,000 nit capable movie, right? Oh, the specular highlight, boom, 10,000 nits. And then you have something, or Jennifer Gala on YouTube, 10,000 nit content, you have something. Dolby Vision 2 is attempting to address this shortcoming, which is the latest movies today and maybe in the future may never exceed 1000 nits ever again. 
If that's the case, and now all your TVs are capable of 2,000 nits or more, they need something. They need something to kind of amplify the HDR impact to keep Dolby relevant. Because at the end of the day, what have I said before with the original Dolby Vision? You don't need it. You really do not need it. They could natively present the movies as they are without the aggressive tone mapping that requires Dolby Vision metadata. So here's the irony, right? The original Dolby Vision was to help your TV keep up with the content. Content was too bright. Dolby Vision allows your TV to show that extra brightness without compromising the clipping, essentially, without compromising all those highlights into bright white clips. When I say clipping, it means that it's so bright, your TV cannot show the brightness uh, beyond just white light. But with tone mapping and Dolby Vision, you can still see the color and it hits the brightness capability of your TVs. That's because the TV was unable to keep up with HDR brightness of the content. Now that your TV far exceeds that HDR brightness, the original Dolby Vision, irrelevant. It's not, it doesn't have to do that job anymore. So Dolby Vision 2, well, it's now elevating the content to match your TV, doing the converse. Would it be converse, the inverse, doing the opposite? Basically helping the dim content keep up with your bright TV, no longer helping your dim TV keep up with the bright content. So Dolby Vision 2 essentially is the opposite of Dolby Vision. Content is too dim, TV too bright, let's raise it up a notch. Which takes us to the most obvious question, should you wait for Dolby Vision 2 equipped TVs? Absolutely not. In this case, I will wait for the content makers, whether it's Netflix or Hollywood produced discs, you know, Blu-rays or Apple or Prime Video, you know, any of those guys, right? Once one guy buys in, then the other guys will join in. Let's wait for those announcements first, right? Now, and secondly, not all the TV makers are in anyway. I don't want you to be waiting next year or the year after when you can buy a perfectly great upgrade TV this year, and then maybe in five years when Dolby Vision 2 is a thing, upgrade again, and I need to wait and see how well this is implemented by both Dolby Vision and the TV makers. But the optimist in me hopes that in three years, everything will be in place. You got the Dolby Vision 2 capable TVs, and then you have the Dolby Vision 2 content being remastered. I know, any excuse for a Criterion or Columbia Classics or Warner Brothers to remaster and make you buy a new disc? Yes, I think they're gonna do it because it's a money grab for them as well. And Dolby Vision 2, more licensing fees for Dolby, but more importantly for consumers, don't worry about brightness. The brightness wars is over. That was my video. Check it out if you haven't seen it. Or check out our live stream on the best TVs and the busts of 2025.